This man is summoned by a mysterious signal from the future, leaves his dying wife to confront his fears on a journey to alter reality and save humanity from an environmental catastrophe. The movie starts with Ethan White and Jude Mathers are workers at Chronicorp facility, the only industry who makes synthetic oxygen for people to breathe. They both are rerouting the power of a nuclear reactor so that the facility's machines can start working again. During the short introduction of the plot, the fans grasp the situation that Ethan is working hard to get extra shifts in order to get promotion and afford high-level oxygen for his wife Zan White, who is sick because she gets infected from breathing without synthetic oxygen's mask. He gives the extra oxygen mask to his wife, and she excitedly paints it with flowers. However, the severity of her sickness is depicted shortly, when she jumps on him, leading his mouth to spill blood. The following day, Ethan is back on his work in the facility, while concerned about Zan too. Soon, a soldier of Chronicorp approaches and tries to take him away, but Jude stops the soldier by saying that Ethan will only go if he goes. So, they both have been directed to the main facility, where a robotic girl is advertising the facility's purpose to sell synthetic oxygen to people. Ethan and Jude then meet the CTO of Particle Research, Regina Jackson. At that point of the story, the plot widens and the audience acknowledges that despite there is synthetic oxygen available for humanity, but it isn't the permanent reliable source, as Zan and many other humans' immunity has rejected the synthetic oxygen. Chronicorp has been calling this epidemic simply sickness. She then tells him that he can be the one savior that human seeks now. Ethan has no idea about what is talking about, and upon entering the classified Hail Mary section, he sees Chronicle where a scientist approaches him while saying that he is the one. The story has been twisted in the plot by this point, so now let's talk about what's really going on. Aiden's father Richard White was a scientist too, and he had built this futuristic machine called Chronicle which acts as a portal between past and the future. Although Ethan hates his father because Richard left him, and his mother also died because of Richard's blunder. However, Regina tells him that they have tested the Chronicle, and the other side of Portal has bounced back some pings, which assures that the future's climate and conditions are habitable again. Moreover, she also adds that they have got a message from 407 years in the future too, which says, send Ethan White. Regina proposes a theory to Ethan by saying that their descendants may have survived in the future, and perhaps they are calling out for Ethan because they have managed to create a cure to this sickness, and they want to hand over it to Ethan so that most of the people can be saved. Ethan suspects something off, he asks whether there is a catch or not, to which Regina says that they still don't know whether he will land safely the other side or not, and moreover, she don't know how to bring him back. What? They are sending a human into oblivion and have no backup plan. If I were Ethan, then I would choose the path what he has chosen too, leaving the facility and coming back to my wife to care for her while she is still alive. At night, when he is back at home, Zan confronts him because she thinks otherwise. According to her, Ethan's priority should be saving humanity, or saving her by going after the cure. The couple then indulge in a discussion in which Ethan's point of view is simply that humans shouldn't have to mess with time, as they can't change anything. However, Zan doesn't think like that. She at last persuades him by saying he has to try to save everyone and shouldn't think whether he can change the future or not. So, Ethan leaves Zand with a note before going. At the facility, Regina and the scientist presented a special suit which resembles a space suit. They tell Ethan that he can make a go-on journey with this suit. The scientist also gives him a futuristic artificial intelligence, Archie, claiming that it will help him out in difficult times. Ethan is terribly confused and terrified. Seeing this, Jude consoles him with the roar of the lion, and he begins to start the journey into oblivion. The scenes visually look alike from the flash. Anyway, while you are time traveling with Ethan into, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the 
notification bell so that you can't miss any future movie synopsis. Ethan lands on the Earth in 2474 ad. He gets unconscious after falling off from the sky. He wakes up soon after feeling the heat because his whole suit is on fire. After controlling the situation, he asks Archie about the whereabout, but Archie hasn't any idea. At this point of the story, the audience gets confused too because what if Ethan gets at the wrong planet? Anyway, the misconception is cleared soon, when Ethan sees a corpse lying in front of some weird gate. After taking a quick look, he sees his own name on the skeleton. This time I am with Ethan. It was a bad decision to mess with time. Ethan also finds the same device on the skeleton hand, as it is on his, but with different colors. I know that the fans are thinking that what if the corpse Ethan is from another dimension? But I think it's not the case as our Ethan here is sure that the skeleton lying here is his. He then finds the other Ethan's Archie and plays the last audio to acknowledge how he dies. Not to mention, the other Ethan was shot on head which theorizes that maybe the people of future will kill our Ethan too. Later at night, Ethan mistakenly eats some fruits which are poisonous and soon he gets sick. Coincidentally, the weather gets bad and it depicts like a meteor has been stroked to the earth. The moment the fans wonders that the future is doomed too, the visual becomes more stressed as a man appears out of the blue and daggers Ethan. The movie has been raising suspense repeatedly. Let me clarify what happened. After Ethan has eaten the poisonous fruit, his bodysuit has sent a signal into the past. And while he was on the verge of death, Jude has landed on Earth which has depicted a striking meteor. Then, he stabbed him with a cure to save his life. After that, the plot quickly changes and Ethan shows him the other Ethan's lying corpse. Ethan proposes that Jude is here and he saves him from poison and this should change the course of time. However, his corpse is still there which means that they haven't changed anything. They then focus on retrieving the cure for the sickness. They go to the Chronicorp facility which is more like a haunted place now. Upon getting in the Hail Mary, the artificial intelligence welcomes him and wants him to activate something. Ethan again has no idea what to do so he decides going with the flow by pressing activate button. And as soon as he presses, the intelligence begins retrieving the DNA sample from his wrist machine. The weird and suspicious thing that fans have noted in this scene was Jude has a gun, and as the other Ethan died because of a gunshot, the fans theorizes what if Jude is his killer in the future or the past. The plot has become a time paradox. The plot quickly fasts forwards to the past when Richard has successfully created the Chronicle. Upon testing it for the first time, he gets a message from someone calling for his son. So, Richard gave a box to Ethan on his birthday. He also instructs him that one day he will have to choose a different and unique path. Ethan quickly inserts his hand into the machine, and a watch-like machine is implanted on his hands. It was for retrieving DNA samples. It was all Richard's plan from the beginning. Back into the future, Ethan and Jude face a power failure. The nuclear reactor must be rerouted. The intelligence then alerts them about instability of the power. Furthermore, if the power is not connected within 3.5 hours, then the charged particles in the Chronicle will create a nuclear explosion. Jude then begins to think of a way to save themselves. However, Ethan thinks about the message that has been sent in the past to him. Someone has sent the message from the intelligence because the messenger has known about the power failure. Ethan is now suspecting Jude. He even asks him about why the Chronicorp has sent him instead of any medical guy. Hearing this, Jude gets mad at him. He tells Ethan that no one was willing to die for Ethan except him. He then consoles Ethan while saying that the messenger who has sent the message isn't here and he is here to protect him. Moreover, he also tells him that they have only got one shot to get back safely. So, the duo decides to go to Access Tunnel to power the nuclear reactor and go back home. On their way, they realize cities buried in nature. Everyone was dead and humans are extinct by that point. Ethan becomes emotional again after seeing the remains. Soon, he loses his calm after seeing Xanthi's remains lying on the ground with the same farewell note 
that he has given her. Ethan then starts blaming himself because he has left her to die alone. Jude, on the other hand, tries consoling him by saying that the other dead Ethan isn't him. However, while consoling he also adds that, maybe it's better this way the same words were recorded on other dead Ethan's Archie. He quickly realizes that Jude is his killer, and they are reliving the same plot which the dead Ethan has done. He plays the recording again, and Jude also listens to his voice. Despite neglecting reality, he loses temper for a while because Ethan has hidden the whole truth from him. Jude then points the gun at Ethan while saying that he is not the guy who is talking on the Archie. However, he has got a gun. Jude is in control. He simply brings him to the access tunnel so that they can reroute the nuclear reactor's power. However, after trying they realize that they have to do it manually, and in doing so, one of them will have to sacrifice. After grasping the situation, Ethan kicks out Jude to turn on the power, and in doing so the oxygen in the room starts fading, and he falls becoming unconscious. It seems like it's all done for our main character, but Jude saves him at the very critical moment. Back at the Chronicle, the countdown is still activated, and they have got only 37 minutes until they go back through the portal. Out of curiosity, Ethan opens a hidden door and finds his dead body still lying on the ground. The movie's plot reaches to the point where it all has started. He then theorizes that they haven't changed the future, and despite his sacrifice in the access tunnel, they are reliving the past of dead Ethan. The duo gets into a fight, in which Ethan asks for a reason about why he will kill him, and Jude is claiming that he is here to protect him and can change everything if they leave now. Soon, Jude changes his mind after seeing dead Ethan's corpse. He tells Ethan that they don't have to go back as this place is full of nature and oxygen, but Ethan ignores and locks him down. Ethan then begins watching his father's video diary in which Richard confesses that Chronicorp has decided to settle their own fate by cheating nature. Then, he calls his wife at home, telling him to go for a walk with Ethan, because he is disturbing by the pain of DNA machine. Soon, Regina enters the plot. She tells Richard that there is no cure in the future, and if the ping is bounced back, and the future conditions are habitable then they must go to the future with the chosen one to save humanity. Richard knows Regina's plan as she is abandoning the whole of humanity, and trying to run away only to save their lives. He simply neglected the offer to build the Chronicle for Sending Matter. At that point, she simply kills Richard, and surprisingly, Jude is seen there watching Ethan's father being killed mercilessly. It turns out that Jude is one of Regina's men. Jude has freed himself from the lock and tries stopping the visuals. Anyway, Regina then instructs younger Jude to kill Ethan's mom and become the guardian of Ethan. The storyline has been changed drastically because the fans have been speculating that it is Richard's plan but it turns out to be Regina's. Ethan and Jude indulge in a fight, and their verbal communication seems to be resembling the audio recorded on the dead Ethan's Archie. They are about to redo everything, but Ethan decides to change the course, and he does simply by saying that he believes in Jude. Hearing this, Jude comes into his senses and realizes that he is Ethan's killer, so he decides to change the course of time by killing himself. In the end, Ethan has received a ping from Richard back in the past. After knowing the whole truth about the evil intentions of Regina, he decides to play along and send a message to Richard which says, send Ethan White. So, the plot has ended at the beginning again. However, the story doesn't end here because Regina is about to leap to the future with the Chosen Ones. Jude has changed the future by sacrificing himself, and Ethan plays his part in changing the future too by sending plants back to the past. When the portal opens, Regina's plan has been destroyed by him, and as the world acknowledges the extinct plans, Ethan realizes that his dead corpse is removed from the future. Furthermore, he also realizes that humanity has survived only because of his decision to send plants in the past. The most interesting thing to focus on is that humans now live by balancing technologies with nature. So, how do you like this movie 2067? What ethics can you draw from this story? Let us in the comments section below. Moreover, let us know about which movie synopsis you want to watch.